Hello, hello, hello. Hello. Hello, um, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Um I I will I will preface this. I, I think this may be our first uh I guess more serious talk of the day. More serious? Um, How can you get more serious than the talk <laughs> I had with Lucy? We talked about genocide. What the hell? How do you oh, mean okay. that? Okay, well, well, I mean it in the sense that uh, that it, it may become a debate. I don't oh, necessarily, you want debate? Yeah, I, I don't necessarily think. I think that looking at it as a debate can be like it can not be the best way of looking at things. I really sure. prefer more of a discussion, right? All right. Um, all right. But well, first off, I, before we get any yeah. further, can you can you introduce yourself and give us your pronouns? Sure. So uh, my name is Epic Ninjali, but most people say it in different ways i just i just go by epic on here all right um epic. my pronouns are he him awesome. um, classics the classics. yeah yeah um i i don't really have like a content or anything i'm i'm kind of just a viewer right now i'm in college so i'm i'm double majoring and i've got two jobs so i'm very busy damn um, <laughs> crazy busy holy yeah. shit yeah Man, good on you though in fact i actually not too hard Oh yeah, I actually got into your streams because they they were chill enough where I could listen to it, get something out of it, but at the same time do homework simultaneously. Yeah, hell yeah! Like that's, uh, that's very flattering. I, I especially the that. yeah, especially the mathier stuff. Um, you know, I think reading is harder because it's like yeah, words, yeah, two of plays of words. But anyways, yeah, I uh, struggle so, to be able yeah. to read anything. Like uh, I'm I'm a, I'm ADHD as fuck, and I can't fucking <laughs> read and read and listen to like a like a show like this, but. Oh, I'm yeah. glad that I'm able to give people the ability to do like uh, you know other stuff. But anyway, oh, yeah, yeah, that's uh, great to hear. Yeah. All right, so hit me, hit me with it, epic. epic okay, and so so what I'll say is this: I've seen. I feel like on the left, on like the generally on the leftist side of YouTube, there's okay. a lot of debate around self-identification sure, with sure. like trans issues. Uh -huh. um, I've seen your debate with RGR, very old one. Yeah, and then I've cool. also seen a debate I think Bosch had with this like Catholic girl lady. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, she was definitely more like, I, I think she was more, she had more malicious intent. I don't even want to say malicious, but she was going in trying to say like, oh, being trans is logically incorrect or something, right? And it's like, oh no, that that's, you know, because she was like a conservative arguing yeah, yeah. for that, she right? She had a very, very, yeah. I would say, I would say that she had malice towards trans people. Maybe not. Uh, maybe she yeah. doesn't have general malice, but she sees yeah. it as like a threat to her worldview or whatever. Exactly. I, I, remember, I remember seeing at least, I don't know if I watched that whole debate, but I remember uh, seeing at least some of it. Yeah. 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 And I think also too, like I, I think, and, and this is sort of what I will say with that. So with that debate, I think she was being disingenuous. I think she was looking at philosophy of language in this way where she was trying to make like, mathematical concepts mm -hmm. determine it in the same way that gender was which there's obvious reasons why that doesn't work right you know we can both have like feel pretty confident that we've got an equal concept of like a triangle but with gender absolutely not right but she was kind of trying to suggest that it was well this um, is something that happens yeah. frequently and i think it's the uh i think it's the sort of uh it's the the end road of the of the sort of sex essentialist and the the uh the gender like prescriptivist you know what i mean mm -hmm. uh, which is that they end up always having to come to the position where it they either have to admit that their model doesn't work or they have to start trying to come up with the um they have to start coming up with the equation i mean this even happened with the uh, fallout of the rgr thing a lot of people didn't see mm -hmm. it because it, ha it only happened in the drama that followed up but in one of the streams yeah. after that debate um that i had um uh, rgr had some guy come on and and put together a c a c c plus program that was supposedly a it would it would plug in different things into an equation and prove <laughs> and prove that my interpretation oh my of gender was was wrong and i thought it was um yeah embarrassing no. like deeply and, uh, like yeah. embarrassing on a level that is like uh hard for me to fully uh explain like fully yeah you know uh, no, yeah, I, th explore. there was this. Yeah, I, I'll tell you this. I'll tell you this. I think, and this is really where I say, like, we may have like an actual debate. Okay, but I sure. think this. Uh, I wanted this to be more of a discussion. Sure, I sure. think that there is like genuine. Like, I think that the way we're looking at gender, I, I think there's a genuine benefit. There can be a genuine benefit, or at the very least, it can be reasonable to not necessarily like exclusively look at gender through a like 
self-identification lens. Well, I don't look and at I, gender yeah. exclusively through a self-identification yeah. lens. I just, I don't at least, think, yeah. Uh, I, I guess uh, the best way that I can describe it is like, I mean, okay, so this is something that I think if I'm, now I'm, I'm recalling this from a long time ago, so I might be misremembering, mm -hmm. but one of the things that happened in the Catholic debate that Vosh had um, was there was this thing of like, oh, well, is gender only, you know, self-identification? And I don't think that that's, I don't think it's, at least personally, I don't really, would I wouldn't really say it's only self-identification, mm -hmm. but um, something that happens sometimes in this conversation is that there's a, uh, there's like a schism between like, how do we approach this topic versus how do we conceptualize it in and of our, like in ourselves? I don't think gender is only a matter of self-identification, but mm -hmm. I feel like that's, it's one of the only ways we can actually in, engage with another person's gender. And this is how, this is where you'll hear me even in my other debates talking about like the uh, a comparison to names. Like, no, like in, unless you believe that we live in some kind of like, I don't know, like wheel of time universe where uh, somewhere in the universe is written everything's true name, you know, and like all mm -hmm. you need to do is discover it and you can cast a magic spell with the true name. Like, I think that the only way that you can, you can engage with someone's name name is the name that they give themselves or the name that you give them. And if you are forcibly giving them a name that they don't want, that's fairly rude and can be extremely harmful and hurtful. Um, and the same thing goes for gender. We can't be in someone's head and there's no real way to like, th there's no coherent or healthy way mm -hmm. to try and like build out a like an essential gender structure. Uh, so I think that the only way we really can engage with it is uh, through self ID. But of course, within ourselves, and how we come to our understanding of gender is much more complicated than that. Like, obviously, I have reasons for why I choose to identify as a woman, um, and also, re building off of that, reasons why I decide to, uh, I openly identify as a non-binary trans woman. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So those reasons are obviously more than just self-identification. I have experiences and feelings and, and whatnot uh, tied to those. I just don't think those are relevant with regard to, um, you know, like how people I interact with one another uh, interpersonally. I think at the end of the day, the buck stops at you respect people for their, you know, for their identity, um, you know, when they're coming to you in good faith. So, mm -hmm. I think, I think in that point, like I wouldn't even really disagree there, especially on like a social level, right? Like I meet somebody, they're trans, right? It's not really my business, nor is it like even something that I'm going to realistically be capable of, of figuring out exactly what that means when they say it right to them uh, of course not right but right. i think that the the position like i think that the when we're looking at it from the perspective of activism mm -hmm. at least for me i don't think that the case is as clear cut um which is really where i think like we actually would disagree i guess okay, so probably how so like explain so how, how you okay do. okay so i think that when we are looking at gender like Gender, insofar as it is a reality to people, a reality of the social structures that exist, right? Mm -hmm. Like, people are trans, people are cis, right? Sure. We use the word. Um, I would say that, like, the, the, the fact, like, when we say something about somebody, if I say, like, okay, this person is a woman, mm -hmm. right? When I am, like, uttering the sentence, there's an idea that, like, I'm trying to communicate something. There is something, some form of information some form of knowledge, right, that I'm trying to convey, right. right? And especially from the perspective of I'm looking at somebody, they are identifying as a man, right, or a woman, doesn't really matter, right? Sure. They're identifying with a certain gender, right? I interpret that as they are trying to communicate something. Now, uh -huh. I 100% agree. Like, how do, we, how do we know exactly what that means? No idea. But when they say, like, I you know, identify as a man, they don't mean that they identify as a carrot, right? There are things we know for sure that gender is not. Well, we don't know. I don't, I mean, um, you could say we don't know if they identify as a carrot, but that, that is, that is a, uh, I mean, it's, I think it's a safe assumption most of the time, but I think mm -hmm. that we can also come to the, the idea that like plenty of people who identify as women are identifying as something alien from what other people might identify as women. For example, uh, yeah, yeah, like the biggest example of this would be uh, Christian womanhood. Um, if you like, uh, you know, uh, if you if you listen to what womanhood means in um, in like 
super fundamentalist spaces, they have basically what equates to like a, a I would call it like a kink xenogender that is applied to the word womanhood mm. that almost no one else in the rest of the world actually shares except for other um, other fundamentalist women. And so in that case, they may as well be saying that when they when they identify as a woman that they're that they're identifying also as a carrot. Um, and the reason for that is that their concept mm. of womanhood is so is so alien uh, from even what you might be expecting, um, you know, that that it, it can be mm. it, it doesn't it doesn't communicate much. Right. Because like when um, I mean, it's this it's the same reason as why, like if if you if you confront a um, uh, a a like a fundamentalist Christian woman with the fact that they may have interacted with or been friends with or whatever with a trans woman and didn't know it. They will vociferously deny mm. this even in the face of like complete confrontation. Um, and the reason for that is that even if they were 100% convinced uh, that they engage with a woman, they can't accept that because their definition of womanhood is one that is incoherent, first of all, and secondly, one that doesn't actually line up with what everybody else would call a woman. They would say, oh, you're not a woman if you don't have kids by the age of 25, or if you don't serve God under your husband. They would they strip mm -hmm. womanhood away from women who are, um, who are in the workplace. They strip womanhood away for all kinds of reasons that are very strange and don't make sense to most people. So that, yep. not, that was a bit of a long uh, a ramble, but I was trying to hopefully I I, I, hopefully you understand what I mean. Oh, yeah, I, I, I take contest to that yeah. small thing. I, I, I do think I understand what you mean. I think my point isn't necessarily to say that there's universality in language. I think that's like trivially false, right? Like we know that, right? Yeah. Why, how would we even have misunderstandings if people always meant the same thing, right? But what I but what I do think that is is when someone says something, I think that there is. I, I'm not going to say always every time, and this is where it gets more murky. But I think that generally speaking, when we say something, we're trying to convey information. And in this sure. respect, if somebody, if there was this like super fundamentalist woman who was trying to convey her womanhood, I am a woman, when she conveys that, she has an idea of what she's saying. It may not match, right. m like, it might not be truly what she means, but in this respect, what's happening is there's a miscommunication. She's telling me something mm -hmm. and I'm interpreting it incorrectly right mm -hmm. now obviously there's this like again I, I don't mean to suggest that there's like an absolute perfection of a definition again maybe with math or something really specific but generally no i don't believe yeah. it exists i genuinely like i don't yeah. i don't believe such a thing and exists. that's and that's fine that's that's fine that's just like that's totally okay but i would mm -hmm. say that like if we're like if the intent of speech is to sort of convey meaning mm -hmm that when we speak right like what we say has to mean something to the other person for it to make to for it to like be accomplishing the goal of the speech sure. in this case right so it's like if this if i were to say like i am a blarb right oh, i'm not necessarily uh, i was just say like, classic I, yeah. blarg yeah it, it's it's like if i say i'm a blarb you can say i don't know what that means right and uh -huh. i can say that well to me blarb means this and or blarb means that but when i clarify what i mean by blarb uh -huh. why am i clarifying well there's an idea that i was trying to convey there was some resemblant concept that we would share right uh -huh. it's like there's a yeah resemblant concept right For and sure, and sure. it's so it's in this respect that like i think when we're talking about gender like there is a reality to it even if that reality is very hard to like identify, it could be totally unscientific too, right? Like it could just be like social or based on my personal subjective understanding. But the point is that like they're trying to convey something. So if somebody like were to come up to me and say like, hey, I'm trans, uh -huh. when I hear that, I interpret that usually as they would prefer that I call them by their gender that they've transitioned to, uh -huh. not by their... Um, perhaps they're like biolog like what they would be biologically, right? Yeah. Or like what would be interpreted as biologically, right? So I interpret that as I want to be called this, right? Sure, but sure. a lot of people when we're talking about it, right? Like when we talk about trans issues, mm -hmm. right? Or like trans activism, yeah. that ambiguity can cause, I would say some level of problems. Okay, and I only like say it so. can cause, so I'm gonna use the example of like, 
I'm going to use the example more like women. So imagine you are a sociologist. Sure. And you are interested in the ways that sexism affects women, mm -hmm. right? If if what it means to be a woman is just what somebody calls womanhood, mm -hmm. then there's no real means of knowing what they're talking about when they say yeah, I'm talking about women, right? You're just I, referring I see what to you're saying, of, but yeah, also like yeah. that's kind of a um you're you're inventing a problem that doesn't exist like the the you're saying that like oh yeah um in you know if if okay so there's two things i want to say here so first of all like yep. uh uh as i'm gonna pause my game for one second here because we're getting into the th into the weeds of it but uh so okay so like the first thing is like you're saying that like if a sociologist is asking you know i want to identify uh discriminate discrimination against women um, and then they go, well, oh, there's people here who identify as women who don't match what I would generally consider this for this purpose. That's a problem with their question. Um, and this mm. is a, there's a couple of, this is something that I've actually talked about in a different context that I think you'll be able to compare, which is, um, it's a, uh, I don't know the right term for it, but it's a, it's like a, a problem of lexicon. So, um, there's a huge problem, um, that happens sometimes, which, uh, in which people go, you know, we have the evidence for HRT being beneficial for binary trans people, but we don't have any evidence that it actually helps non-binary people. Now, of course, the evidence does exist. There's, of course, tons of people who've had this experience who'd be willing to talk about it, but it does. it's hard to find a study that'll tell you, oh, non-binary people benefit in this way. They do actually exist, but it's harder to find than for binary people. And um, the reason for that is because uh, non-binary people are often forced to take a binary, uh, even even a false identity that they don't actually identify by because that is the question that's being asked of them. When they go to their doctor, they might have four options if they're lucky. Two options if you're going if you're in like a place that doesn't have like hasn't really updated to the you know modern questionnaires or whatever and so your doctor's office is prescribing you hrt as a you know as a as a you know whatever gender you're in there and that they give you the options for so it's a limitation of language and the question and and of course you can imagine you know so you can probably hopefully see the parallel there where the question that's being asked is important if the question is you know how do women suffer uh you know in in our society in one way or another well the question might actually have to be slightly bigger than that because um there are people um who uh th because because what you're trying to ask doesn't doesn't necessarily follow it doesn't actually operate on the same um uh what, what should i say the the problem is not using the same language as what you're asking you know what i mean so if you're asking why do women suffer in our society well there are all kinds of trans women who suffer in the exact same ways um uh that cis women do um regardless of how they identify there are lots of non-binary people who are identified against their will by uh hostile actors as women or as feminine there are even sometimes men who are identified as feminine and and uh, sort of excised and mistreated. So the question of like, how do women suffer might simply be too limited. And um, you can certainly ask that question, but I don't think that, um, uh, I don't think that it, it, it uh, I don't know that, I think that you're, you're either having to sacrifice the actual accuracy in order to get a, a, a simpler answer um, by saying, okay, well, you know, we're going to, we're going to choose to divide the world into men and women, and then talk about who's being discriminated against here. Um, that's one problem. Or you can also say, um, when we're talking about this picture, if we're trying to like get a picture of patriarchy and how it operates, um, trans women, non-binary people are not a, uh, you know, significant enough number, uh, uh, or people who are identifying as women but have a, such an alien definition of women that we wouldn't recognize them as women for our sociological question, they're not going to represent a large enough number to distort the questions about, like, does a patriarchy exist? You could still acknowledge that even without even with outliers. You see what I mean? Yeah. So there's I mean, two I, issues I, with yeah. that. Yeah. I, think I, I think I get what you're saying. I think the only reason I'm, I'm really bringing all of this up is because mm -hmm. I think that when you're trying to, like, argue for different types of trans advocacy in some respects right like if we're just looking at it from the social perspective right mm -hmm. i mean i'll admit a lot of this gets murky in the sense of like what are we actually aiming for what is justice what is good i don't want to go that direction because that's very 
Yeah. It can get really murky. But my my thought process, at least here, is that if you are trying to argue with somebody for something like, for instance, trans uh, gender affirming care, uh huh, right? Sure. I think there there is the idea that the person's going to say, okay, what is the what are the like like I guess they're going to ask what should be the things that lead to somebody receiving gender affirming care, right? Why is this beneficial? But they might throw some argument, right? And you can I think you can argue, right? You can just say, well, look, like when we have people who self-identify from this, generally speaking, uh -huh. it benefits them, right? Sure. But I think for some people, they might also they might still push back on that. Um, and I think the idea is that if you can if you can ground gender as something that is, I guess we could say, like ph philosophical terms, you'd be like, it's something phenomenal, right? Like it is something that is actually experienced, even if sure. that experience is an understanding of your experience, right? There's an idea that like, if you can identify it with a reality, you're saying rather that basically than... we need to pragmatically assume a false construct in order to be more optically effective. But I just don't buy I, that that's the case. I'm not, well, here's the thing. I wouldn't say that it, I, I wouldn't necessarily say that that's true. I'm just saying that I don't think that that's like inherently like bad slash inherently false. Like it's just a different way of looking at it, a different way of trying to argue in my opinion, but. I just think that, um, like, okay, so in this particular example, you say, okay, um, so I have one, I can speak from my personal experience. When I, uh, and this was before, you know, this was like, well, it would have been in like 2011 or so when I was going to my first endocrinologist to begin my transition. Uh, I told my endocrinologist that um, I wanted to, uh, I wanted to take estrogen and I wanted to, that my goal was for a more androgynous appearance. That was my end goal that I uh, didn't that I didn't want to immediately uh, jump to like high doses or whatever, but that I was going to aim for an androgynous appearance. And they were just like, okay, that sounds good. We'll start you on this dose. This is what will probably give you your achieved results. And that was it. And mm -hmm. it was that simple. And this was not like a, you know, yeah. this was an older doctor, an older endocrinologist, um, you know, who was progressive enough, but there was, it wasn't like he was plugged into the discourse of trans communities. He just listened to what I wanted and what I needed. Uh, he trusted that I had talked, uh, you know, at that point you needed to have like a, a, a letter from a psychologist. Um, he trusted that I had talked to my psychologist and I had, of course, but, um, even if this mm. were done on a, you know, on a, uh, what I argue for, which is an informed consent thing, it's still the same thing. Doctor listens mm -hmm. to what the needs of the patient are. The patient says, Hey, uh, my body is not yeah. uh, working for me in this way. We have an easy way to fix it, or, yeah. or a relatively, I, yeah. So like, I don't, I don't. Here's the thing: I, I don't really like. I don't even really disagree with that. I think yeah. the point I would sort of make, right, is that like somebody who's arguing against this kind of stuff is going to say, right, why should I prioritize? You know, for instance having health insurance cover gender affirming care. It always comes if, back to insurance. Right. See, that's I'm just the saying, real right? like question. They're going to they're gonna debate that. And the, you're question gonna, and always like gonna... boils, the question always boils <laughs> yeah. down to insurance. Yeah. And, to me, but yeah. that to but me, yeah. that's a pretty big thing because you see what this is, this mm. is where it's gone. It's we've left the realm of like ethics and we've gone into, ah, oh, shit. Now well, we have well, to deal with thing. insurance I, companies. I don't, and I hate I don't to break this to you, but insurance companies, uh, will do basically anything they can to get out of paying for anything. And the answer is that yeah. uh, as a society, we need to move forward from insurance companies, but also as a society, the answer is not to like fearfully count yeah. out of their desires. Well, and well, here's by the, the way, yeah, yeah. Before, before we go off this topic, and by the way, the current um, uh, WPATH, um, is a great example, but but current standards of care already have moved past this conversation. If you go and look at um, at the current like trans standards of care from basically any major medical organization at the current moment, they already have they've already adopted basically my argument, um, which is to say uh, you don't have to uh, you don't have to you know uh, admit to some sort of uh, essential gender that you're trying to fulfill your soul you just need to talk to your patient about what it is and this will be covered under gender affirming care and in most places this where like in in most rational places they've the, the state has already said gender affirming care is covered and there's no more questions that need to be asked the state has decided mm -hmm. it we're not going to cut down we're not going to inject the state uh to, to try and do mathematics to figure out what people's actual gender 
finger is because that's absurd. Yeah. This is between a doctor and a patient. And if the yeah. doctor says, we're prescribing estrogen for this person's uh, gender, then that's it. It doesn't matter if they're non-binary, bunny, carrot, uh, or, or, or plain old classic woman. It doesn't matter. Yeah. It's just I mean, doctor yeah. has decided, patient and doctor have come together and decided estrogen yeah. is the right path. There you have it. Bam. I mean, I suppose, I suppose in this respect, I mean, I still, I mean, in the sense of saying like, okay, well, trans healthcare has moved past that. Like if it had, I, I don't know a lot about like the specific details of like what the policy is right now. If that's the case, that's awesome. I do still hear people debate about this though. And I, and I guess at the beginning, I know you, you brought up like, well, this comes back to insurance, right? Yeah. Where it's, we should look at morality, not insurance. I would say that like, yeah. Like we should look at morality, but morality doesn't necessarily mean that this question is invalid. No, I only say no, that no, no. because you misunderstand. Yeah. I'm not saying we don't need to grapple with the insurance question and that it needs mm. to be ignored. I'm just saying that it's a different question altogether. How you strong, yeah. how you strong arm for profit insurance companies to pay for uh, mm -hmm. for insurance is not a question of whether or not we should uh, whether or not we should be like policing people's gender more. I feel like that's turning mm -hmm. the question on its head. The I, obvious yeah. problem is that there's these giant corporations that get to decide it to inject themselves between a patient and a doctor and decide what does and doesn't get paid for. That's the problem. And the answer is you fucking strong arm them. The answer is you say, yeah. you don't get to know this. This is between patient and doctor. State backs us up. Gender care is covered. If you don't like it, you don't get to do business here and your competitors will win. And then guess what? Mm -hmm. They go, <laughs> actually, sorry, we'll pay for the HRT because it's super cheap, actually. They always mm -hmm. do. They have everywhere. This is how it is on the West Coast. In California, yeah. Oregon, and Washington are all basically the same way, which is that you can get, you can be a, a, a xenogender and your doctor can prescribe you HRT and that fucking insurance company is going to pay their thing or else they're not going to get their business license, their insurance license renewed in the state. And that's, yeah. in my opinion, the better way to do it. That's how yeah. you deal with the insurance I guess, question. Yeah. I yeah. guess what I, I guess what I mean to say, like, at least with what I, what I just mentioned, I wasn't even really even meaning to go there. I, I just, I was looking at it like this, like uh, to me, I personally uh -huh. believe that if there were two people, one of them wants a cosmetic surgery yes. just for like aesthetic purposes. Like I want to, I want a straighter nose or something. Right. Sure. And then someone else is trans. Right. right. And they are like, not like comfortable in their own body they have mm -hmm. sort of show like to me i personally think that there are grounds like real grounds and when i say real i'm specifically referring to this like phenomenal reality of gender the mm -hmm. social reality of gender right i would say that there's real grounds to suggest that the person who is trans should have priority over getting the cosmetic surgery over somebody who is looking at it from I want to yeah, straighten you're nose. creating a you're creating yeah, a um, you're creating a conflict where there isn't one there isn't a shortage of plastic surgery and there isn't even a shortage of funds for plastic surgery mm -hmm. so that is a it's it's you've invented a two you've you've pit two people against each other who aren't actually against each other someone who wants to get a nose job because their their appearance bothers them um, in one way or another is not at war with a trans person trying to get FFS. They're not at war, they're not in competition. It just isn't the way it is. It's mm -hmm. not like there's like a, you know, huge battle to get a slot to get a nose job. In fact, the nose jobs are, you know, fairly accessible in the United States. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, they're a little expensive, but you know, still that's always what it comes back to in the US is, you know, cash, but yeah. Um, but but yeah, they're not, there's no, that, that conflict. I mean, yeah. it's, it's, a, it's a conflict you can imagine but it's yeah. it's ultimately imagined, and I and at the I mean, end of the day, it, yeah. but also at the end of the day, I think that we should, um, as a society together, uh, be more open to um, to embracing people's general need to have control over their body, and that doesn't mean that like uh, you know you wake up in the morning you say I want a nose job and then you get a nose job instantly. Obviously, that's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. That's like a, a you know that's not how it works. But, yeah, yeah. But but we can I think we can acknowledge that. Um, uh, it probably should be easier for people to be able to get cosmetic surgery at an affordable rate if they want it um, and if they need it. And uh, also that people should be able to access other options as well because there's there's m multiple sides to the cosmetic surgery thing. Um, mm -hmm. But the, uh, yeah, I don't know. Like I, 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 I do yeah. think I that mean, there's like a pressing yeah. need, but the pressing need is self-evident. Like a trans person is says like, and not only this, but of course, there's already existing science that that shows that if somebody is like coming to you and they're 
like here's the thing if somebody is 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 coming to you and going i feel like i'm going to kill myself because my nose is something that i'm thinking about all the time and it makes me feel ugly and people are making fun of me or whatever and like mm -hmm. provide like i feel like denying them that is probably not the right path like they're probably have a good yeah. reason for saying that um i mean if somebody had like a, a horrific you know burn on their face and they said i want to have cosmetic surgery because this is impacting my life um most people would go okay yeah you have a pretty pressing and reasonable need for this and yeah there's probably some cases that are less so than others but there's no there isn't like a scarcity at the moment there's no mm -hmm. scarcity of these things um yeah. and i don't expect that there will be um I mean, the biggest scarcity that exists is one that really only trans people care about, which is, you know, uh, uh, bottom surgery. Bottom surgery is scarce, and there's not many people seeking bottom surgery, uh, even among the trans populace. Not, um, you know, there's still a lot of people who don't yeah. decide to pursue it. And the reason it's scarce is because there's no education, because there's no um, doctors uh, who have been taught how to do it and because there's um, there's still pre-existing prejudices against doing it. So there's only a handful of doctors in the country yeah. that will do it. It's not like I there's suppose... like random cis people who are like, yeah, yeah. today I want to go. Um, I would love to get a free, uh, extremely difficult and painful surgery to readjust my, my you know, genitalia. That's not a thing, mm. you know? So... Well, I, I suppose then in this respect, like I, I guess given everything you said, I guess we don't really disagree to be honest, maybe at all. Um, mm -hmm. And I and I know it might maybe might, might sound controversial, like what the heck? But what about what you said? I, I guess to me, like when I when I brought up this sort of point, it was not really even to say like, okay, there's this like real life issue where like this is happening to happening. It's more so like it's kind of like how when you debate with abortion, they'll always br like I've seen this a lot where I'll debate people about abortion and they'll talk about oh, what about when the fetus is like two weeks from coming out and it's conscious and it's that subject human being. And then you look at the data and it's like, that's n like basically never the case. Right. People are not usually having abortions at that point. But at the end of the day, right? Like if you are engaging in a debate, if you're engaging in like an argument, then that may come up. Right. And it's not to say that it's like that, even those like five people where it matters, same thing with transports. People talk about transports all the time and it's like, sure, how but... frequent is this? So what's the, even, so, right? So what's so, the, so yeah. to, to, to draw the parallel, Okay, yeah. so, um, like, to draw the direct parallel, so what if somebody wants to get a, a nose job and they want to get a nose job so bad that they've discussed it with their doctor multiple times and they've done, you know, they've de demonstrated a, a need and a want and they've expressed mm -hmm. their – so cover their nose job. Yeah, I mean, in this respect, okay. you recognize – yeah, in this respect, though, like, all, all I would like say is – Seems like that's the easy like, answer. Yeah, like, but I mean, yeah. in, in this case, in this case, though, we recognize that we should affirm this because we recognize that there is, like, a need there that is a yeah. real need, right? right? And I think that I maybe just misinterpreted you, to be honest, mm -hmm. um, because I think that I had gotten the impression from other debates, and could be my fault, that there was – like, I, I felt like there's, like, a, a certain level of, like – I guess saying like, oh, but the phenomenal part doesn't matter. Ignore the phenomenal part. Ignore the reality. I say reality part. I don't even mean reality part in the sense of like there being trans people, but the reality that like being trans is something that is like more than just a sort of trivial. It's like it's like people will sometimes, especially on the conservative side, they'll argue like people just wake up one day and they're like, oh, I think girls are cool. I'm going to call myself a girl. Right. Like yeah, that's like just, the argument. That's insane. the straw man. Right. Like, it, yeah, they're just insane. Yeah. And but like, the, the, but yeah. the, you can't you become stupid if you if you let your if you let the terms of your thought be dictated by stupid people. And like. And that's the problem that I think happens all the time mm. is that there's a lot of cowardice. And part of the reason for this is that like uh, conservatives like to talk a big game. They like to be very loud and violent and angry and whatever. Um, but their arguments suck and they fall apart very quickly. They have to strong arm their way and intimidate their way um, to into power. And we don't win by letting them do that. You know, when we, when it comes to gender, it's like, Okay, so they're like, oh yeah, well, what if somebody, you know, what if somebody just wants to to wake up in the morning and be a woman? Okay, so they want to be a woman, and they're like, oh, so you think they should just get their their like genitals cut up? No, I don't think that's the case. They probably would have to talk to a mm -hmm. doctor who'd be willing to do that. And then they're like, okay, and then you go, yeah, okay. So they if they really if they feel a pressing need to change their body in that way, they should be able to go talk to that doctor. That doctor is an mm -hmm. expert and will know the risks and will be able to sit down and talk with them about it. And there's probably 
go there's in any world there will be a process for this and if there's like a and then sometimes they'll go really crazy and they'll come up with some crazy fantasy and you just tell them you're engaging in some kind of weird fantasy i don't know uh, you want to tell me like I don't know like you want to imagine there's like some creepy ripper doc that's like making money You're like okay there's other ways to deal with that problem that's not really has anything to do with trans people trans people have a need they're trying to have met you're trying to stop them from that on behalf of a, fa a fictional book that you're writing you know what I mean and I feel like it's important to be able to resist yeah. that and not fall onto their terms because of like a fear of them coming up with a like a argument that like is like a, a shitty gotcha their shitty gotchas are really weak most of the time and they don't actually convince yeah. most people like i mean the maybe, scientific maybe community isn't convinced yeah. by this maybe, it's, maybe yeah. yeah it's purely political i guess i guess maybe we we have maybe a slight difference then just in terms of how we're viewing it like the way i see it right like mm -hmm. i see if somebody brings up a straw man of like a trans issue mm -hmm. case right sure. like i see it as just like okay well it's not hard to argue that there's a real reality like phenomenal reality that like leads to people having like extreme like you know like literally people killing themselves because sure. they don't have like the gender affirming the care they need and that can right. pull up studies that's and all that stuff. But the point, and yeah. that's true for, for non-binary yeah. people that's true even for uh mm. xenogender people um there are pe people who use neo pronouns that that is still a true reality and they can articulate it and they do very well it's just that um conservatives want you to buy that some types of trans people are because they seem a little more complicated or they seem a little more i don't know maybe in some cases even cringe or whatever that that means that their case is somehow worse but it isn't it's the same and they're able mm -hmm. to articulate it to the same degree yeah. um yeah yeah so it's just like yeah, and i yeah the, I'm, the problem the, uh, something yeah. i wanted to say real quick is just that like there's a reason why i call myself a gender ascensionist you know because i think that mm -hmm. like that that phenomenon you're talking about of like well people are talking about something when they say woman yeah obviously they're saying a word for a reason but the problem with woman and the problem with gender as it exists currently in our society is it's fucking nonsense like I said, everybody means something different and everybody has a completely different uh, uh, um, you know, threshold for what womanhood means to them and what they define a woman as. And if you're trans, you get this experience all the time because you will be, uh, you know, sometimes, uh, some people, depends on your experience, I guess, uh, but most trans people, at least at some point during their transition, will have the experience of being gendered one way, one minute, and then being gendered another way within minutes. And you have no idea necessarily why people gender you one way or the other. You can have suspicions, whatever. There are, co mm -hmm. there are trends, but there's no consistency. And I think that we should move beyond gender as a meaningfully determinative uh, part of our lives. Like, um, people should be able to express themselves and we should, and as it exists right now, we have to contend with the fact that a lot of our society currently uses terms like man and woman and they use them in pretty weird ways and sometimes very restrictive ways. And the way that we deal with that is by saying, maybe we don't need to participate in having such strict definitions of man or woman. Maybe we should allow people to identify as they uh, as they desire mm -hmm. uh, because that's all that we can know anyway. And then we should sort of move to, you know, understanding people in better terms yeah. that's that's yeah. that, that's the whole I guess, reason yeah you know? and i guess yeah and i guess i think we've had i think a good conversation so far mm -hmm. i feel like i have ideas of things i might want to bring up but i don't want to take up too much time at le but i will say at least for me i think at a certain level and i'm just going to throw this out there not necessarily saying like there's plenty of arguments you can give against it but i do think that there's a at a certain level like you don't fully understand yourself the, and the way when I when I say that, what, what I mean in this sense, right? Like if take and I don't mean to make this like I'm not trying to say that this is like the same thing as trans. So like don't take this as that's what I'm saying, right? Mm -hmm. But if we consider the case of somebody who is like a narcissist, like sure. clinical narcissist, uh -huh. right? They have a consumption of themselves. Mm -hmm. And the reason we call it narcissism is that their recognition of themselves is not correct or accurate to their actual real behavior the way they treat people the way they view things right it's like if somebody you know what i'm saying right and, but and we, this we're enter, say, we enter into very murky territory because i, un I understand and i'm not i'm not like trying to very say murky that, territory yeah. because like i'm not again, trying to yeah i'm not I mean, trying to say that like we should look at trans like the same way definitely not but my only point really is to say that like when we're talking about different examples of like need like you brought up somebody who is suicidal about how their nose looks 
-hmm. Well, at the end of the day, like it's that person's experience that we have to figure out at some level, at somehow, if we're going to appropriate their need versus someone else's needs right. versus someone else's needs. And we can argue like, is it scarce? Is it not scarce? I think a lot of the problems with scarcity are really economic problems with like how capitalism works. Sure. Right. But at the end of the day, like, I just think that like there is a value and I, and, and this is why I say, I don't think we really disagreed much at the end of the day, because you did affirm like pretty strongly, like that sort of phenomenal side, which I didn't. I guess I probably just misinterpreted sort of what you had said, at least in that long ago debate. Um, but I think that there's like a genuine value in looking at that sort of phenomenal side, even if it's hard to like define just because of the fact that it allows us to better understand like what's happening when people are having those experiences. Again, we can say, is it ever like possible? Ideally, of course not. But I think I at just, a certain level- I feel level, like we're getting a little vague you know, here because I-, I I don't know. Like, first of all, I mean, I've never, I, 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 I am a, I'm a trans woman who's transitioned. I've gotten bottom surgery. Like I've, I, you know, I've, I've, I've been through a lot of this stuff. Like, obviously I very much mm -hmm. recognize and regularly constantly more than I even ever talk about like self ID more than anything else. I advocate mm -hmm. for people being able to get care. I just don't think that um, one thing that I think should be shared between the person getting the nose job and trans people is that neither of them should be pushed to suicide uh, to try and prove um, that they need something. Um, that mm -hmm. people should be more compassionate and understanding. And the reality is that yeah. the medical structures that currently exist, even in our fucked up society, already recognize that. Yeah. It's already in I place. I mean, in a, in a sense- People in a sense, that it shouldn't be like that. And, in a sense, I do, get, yeah. I do get where you're coming coming from in the sense of like, there's this idea of like trying to argue for the reality of being trans, but at the end of the day, in a way, being trans is not the issue. It's how seriously people are taking what that means to be. Right. People will take something like, oh, I'm suicidal. Right. More like seriously, more so like especially like think of conservatives. Right. Like if you say like I'm getting bullied at school and I'm suicidal, they're more likely to take that as like, OK, you need medical help versus somebody. No, who's they're trans, not. They're oh, say, absolutely. You don't think no, so? they're not. Conservatives are absolutely okay. not. No, they don't give a fucking shit. Okay. And I know this firsthand. I lived within. OK. The, the depths of conservative society, they don't give a fucking shit about that. In fact, they're yeah. doing, they are constantly doing everything they can to cut counselors out of school, to tell kids to get tough. If you, you could just go sit through some conservative content, you can listen to the way they talk about kids expressing their feelings. Like, they, they, the way they talk about children, they're like, you kids need to toughen up. And then they cite that, uh, you know, weak men make, uh, you know, make weak, you know, bad times, bad times make yeah, strong men. That's yeah. their whole, that's like one of their I, I, adages. Yeah. They don't this believe respect, in any of that. Yeah. You can't actually appeal yeah. to their humanity in that way. It doesn't actually work. In, the, in this um, respect, yeah. we, maybe it's better to maybe then in this case, put it as more of those like centrists where it's like they're sympathetic to right leaning views. Maybe they think transgenderism is like nonsense right but they do still care about like kids the idea to me is that if you can convey or convey because that's the thing at the end of the yeah, day yeah but it's so easy are saying, to talk to a centrist you know I mean? by just being like okay so a centrist comes up and goes yeah well mm. you know okay first of all the cent a lot of the centrists that you're talking about um the ones who are gonna go yeah well you know what about if I so if i want to get a you know a, a nose job so that my nose looks like the who's from whoville you think i should be treated the same as a trans woman those people are in bad faith they're not actually centrist they're fucking mm -hmm. conservatives and they're too cowardly to actually say it they want to pull one over on you yeah. but a real centrist goes well i don't really know about this trans stuff you go hey um imagine if you had something with your body that made you feel like shit like imagine if tomorrow you just like say you're talking to a guy a, you know a, a cis guy who's uh you know who's uh you know doesn't understand and they're a centrist you go hey mm -hmm. if you woke up tomorrow and you had gynecomastia you you you're the a hormone thing that was out of your control made you wake up in the morning and you were developing like large breasts mm -hmm. and you didn't like it that might make you feel uncomfortable right they go yeah sure don't you think you should be able to go to your doctor and say, hey, help me with this? And your doctor should be able to prescribe you, uh, uh, you know, hormones and maybe even a surgery to help you. And they'll go, yeah, actually, that makes sense to me. That's the entire trans, the entire trans conversation mm -hmm. in a single bundle. That's how you can win over a centrist. You don't mm -hmm. have to do. Um, but the reality is that a lot of the people that you're talking about aren't actually centrists. They're conservatives yeah. trying to fucking take advantage I, of your desire yeah. to be, you know, amicable and whatever uh, to try and push a conservative worldview to get you to otherize uh the ones that they think are too bad while ultimately holding a knife behind their back ready to kill the rest of the trans people that they don't like mm. yeah yeah i mean yeah i mean and to be fair like what you just brought up right like in a way like to me even the argument you just made like yeah i guess i don't view like me i i sure maybe my like 
the way I'm presenting this is like more complicated than it needs to be. From an activism perspective, it might not even be as effective. But at the end of the day, like even the argument you did just make, like mm -hmm. I see that as that is an effective argument because it allows that person to sort of place themselves in the shoes of a trans person more or less and sure. recognize the real phenomenal experience. And again, I, I say real, I've seen some people in the chat were like confused. When I say real, I just mean that it is like you are experiencing it. It is like phenomenal. Like, and when I say phenomenal, like you can look it up, whole philosophical thing. Yeah, I'm I really just, into German I idealism. Where, but, I just wonder yeah. where the like, where the the concept that there was no acknowledgement of the real, like, I don't know where it came from, the idea that nobody was engaging in. That's what most people are engaging in. Like, I, I don't know. I guess I've never, I've never heard even a, like a, yeah. I've never even heard the most extreme, uh, uh, you know, Tumblr uh, xenofeminist say, you know, pretend that there's no like real experience that's being had. I think, just, I think the reason maybe I interpreted it this way, at uh -huh. least in the Vosh debate, I know Vosh at certain points in time was trying to argue that like gender was a, was just a descriptive word. Like it was a sign for a signified. So like the idea was like, I say that's a rock. Right. And he yeah. was trying to say that gender is just a word we use to d designate that's a rock. But, but if it, you take it, that, it is, but I, it's I mean, that's, but that's word, fine. But right. It is. Yeah. But, but here's the thing. Like, he, he said that. But then in the next breath said that we don't need to have like a specific definition of rock. It can mean whatever we want it to be. To me, I felt like it's like, well, those two lines of thought, like at least on their own contradict. Right. Do you get what I'm saying? Like, really. uh, it, okay, honest, if I were to say, really. it's okay, it's okay. If I were to say, right, like, a rock is whoever identifies as a rock, mm -hmm. and it means nothing other than I identify as that, but then you say that's a rock without that person identifying that they are a rock, those two definitions aren't equivalent. Do you get what I'm saying? There's a word yeah, for, like, it's like, like it an object. It's an, yeah, it's like there's, there's a term for it that is an object that references, or at least there's the word, as it yeah, references an gender, object, and there's a word about, as it we're, references we're, we're talking conception. About, uh, we're talking about a clash between um, – well, I mean we're dealing with lots of incoherencies in, for, in the first place with gender at all. And mm -hmm. uh, we're talking about the difference between you uh, giving an identity to an object that has no ability to speak for itself because it isn't, an, mm -hmm. it isn't a sentient being and a construct that can only exist arguably only for – you know, humans, as far as we know, like, as far as we know, like, you know, most animals don't seem to have a concept of gender in the way we do. Uh, they don't, yeah. even, most yeah. of them don't even have a concept of sex. They're like, mm -hmm. they're looking for, I don't know. They operate on different, totally different ways of, of identification and whatnot. But, um, you know, they certainly don't have it in the way we do. Um, so th we're talking like gender is only relevant socially, you know, mm -hmm. it, it doesn't matter any other way. Like, in, in the void of needing to identify yourself as anything, you just are yourself and you pursue what you want for yourself and whatever path it takes you to get there. Um, mm -hmm. Like, so I, I just, I don't understand exactly what the application yeah. here is or where the, where the problem is arising. Um, because for yeah. me, it's just like, yeah, if a woman is any, like the only coherent and functional definition that we could, that I could, that I've ever really been able to come up with for womanhood is, you know, somebody who identifies as a woman. It's somebody who includes themselves in the, in the extremely broad category of woman. And they choose to identify that way. That's the only real workable way that we find this word. And also that's exactly why I am a, you know, gender ascensionist. Some people call that yeah. an abolitionist because I think that that's like, uh, it's it's it doesn't mean much. It doesn't tell us much about people. Mm -hmm. And if you actually look into the reasons why it matters so much, they're almost all bad. The reason why like womanhood matters so much um, is is because we have a, a society that is uh, that is striated, but you know that is cleft in two, yeah. and that people are forced into different behaviors on on lines of an arbitrary thing that was you know built off of. Uh, crude observations of sexual dimorphism, um, extremely crude, I should say, uh, and that, that were then built into religious texts and then, you know, found their way, you know, by mm -hmm. tradition baked into society. I find that to be um, a pretty bad reason to, like, hold on to those types of things, you know? So I think we should move beyond it and just find better ways of 
of things of fixate fixating on and like that's not to say there's never gonna there's not gonna be any gender terms i just think they shouldn't mean that much you know yeah um well yeah i, I mean i yeah. think in, in in many respects like i think they are remnants of a form of social control right like uh at of least course. as they exist now yeah, of course um i, I and that says honestly like i I know you said you prefer to be a gender ascensionist. I think that that makes, I definitely do think that's a good way to go, especially compared to like gender abolitionism. Not to say that like, I, I like, I think people who are gender abolitionists, they're going into it from like, I would say a good place, but wow. I do think at a certain level, the social structures are how we make sense of ourselves. It's how we develop a concept of self, right? Like we're engaging with these means of understanding each other. And it's how we engage with those that we develop a uh, self especially yes. one that we can explain like in words, right? It's yeah. why like no, nobody's out here saying like, we need to get rid of the word extrovert and introvert. We need to remove them. Nobody's saying that, right? Because there's no- No, but that's because they're, yeah. they're not yeah. loaded to the same degree. And, uh, yeah. and yeah. I mean, some people will, uh, will regularly criticize like, you know, usually not to the same level of intensity, but will criticize the fact that like, this introvert extrovert thing is just a very silly way of trying to categorize people. It doesn't actually mean anything. It's like, I don't know. Mm. It'd be like, I don't know. It's kind of like uh, gender is kind of like trying to split the world into like a people who play on Xbox versus yeah. people who play on PlayStation. In fact, I think the PlayStation Xbox war is probably more meaningful and more easy to like, uh, <laughs> to like categorize than, uh, yeah. than gender is. Gender is a mess. Mm. And so, well, like, yeah. yeah, I just, I just, the, the, yes, it, it, we're built, we build our identities with garbage. Like, that's how we, we, we move through the world and it's filthy and there's all kinds of things that, you know, messy, fucked, fucked up religions and bad concepts and things that don't actually make much sense, but that we didn't have the intellect or whatever or the insight at the time to know that they didn't make sense. We build with trash, but some trash is radioactive and we should probably work towards getting rid of the radioactive trash or at least encourage mm. people to rethink it. And I feel that way yeah. about gender. And I think that like in our current parameters, the way to do that is to acknowledge the the simple fact that nobody here can come up with a definition of woman or man that's going to do any justice to the actual reality of the people who assume that identity so we should just leave it up to the people that's why i i stand by self-id so much yeah because it's just i don't see any reason for us to try and do it any other way yeah um, i mean yeah yeah i i think i think maybe in this respect like just thinking about like our conversation that we've had so far i think maybe i am like being too good faith with uh conservatives yeah. or even people who are more centrist trying to argue um i think there are a lot of yeah. so-called centrist communities who uh, aren't really as centrist as they actually are especially mm -hmm. when it comes to gender and they uh if you interrogate yeah. them a little bit you'll realize they have a lot of weird yeah. positions uh you saw you see this a lot with the um neo pronouns and xenogender discourse where if you drill down into it you realize they're actually actually their actual positions if interrogated at all they um they know how to do the dance to say like to appear as though they're like a progressive they'll be like yeah i think trans people should be able to get the medical treatment they need and then you drill down and ask them why they think that and they're um they basically have like a a, a mixture of very from 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 innocuous but uh uh but like poorly structured to outright transphobic reasonings uh behind what they say their reason mm -hmm. that they're so fixated on neo pronouns or xenogenders is because of a it, actual fundamental transphobia that they yeah. don't believe that that peep that pe that people get to like that people have a say in who they are they don't believe that trans people are what they say they are they're trying to placate trans people and they're willing yeah. to accept placation to a certain degree but the neo pronouners go too far and and i find those to be like like that type of person to be a like what the wolf in sheep's clothing so to say they're the mm -hmm. they're the conservative masquerading as a centrist yeah i think um, that and I, and I think maybe yeah. even the the points that i bring up they may only apply to like a very like relatively minor group in, mm -hmm. in the sense of like for instance like i'll tell you this like i just like on a more personal, like I grew up with tons of like religious trauma, basically. I was like fundamentalist Muslim household. Yeah. Um, but even then it was like more Christian evangelical because my parents were converts. It's really weird to be honest, like yeah. the situation my parents had. But I, I, I think that like I definitely kind of developed a kind of like uh, cynicism towards a lot of religion in general. Mm -hmm. um, I ended up getting into philosophy and I've met a lot of people even now where it's like, 
I think that they do genuinely go in with good faith with a lot of things. They've got this very long, complicated metaphysical argument for this and that and why they think the Trinity is true, yada, 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 yeah. right? And I think with many of these people especially, it doesn't even necessarily have to be these people. I mean, I meet some people who are into psychology and they're convinced that like gender is, right? Like the, the relevant part of gender, it's a remnant of like, essentially like sexuality or something right mm. the the point is right like there's a lot of people who i think will operate within like certain theories mm. and we can say like well how reliable is that really right are we 100 percent sure that this is like exactly the whole picture totally yeah. reason like totally reasonable no sure. issues with that but i think at least with these people like i think it can be i get the impression that like really focusing on this sort of phenomenal aspect is can be genuinely possible like progressive well, sure like yeah, yeah. I'm, I, mean, I know a guy i, I think that's yeah. fine i just think that uh you know yeah. you got to be you got to be cognizant of the framing and 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 also yeah. you don't want to like i said you don't want to give up like in the name of like coming to some to like i don't know of like matching someone's framing you don't want to give up like mm -hmm. truth you know and yeah, yeah, I do yeah. think that there's tons of people who have real questions about it but i just don't i don't think it's as a yeah. i don't there's, think it requires yeah. um like uh minimizing or cutting down or even uh you know um negating the experiences of people who uh you know who like, like yeah. non-binary people or whatever or yeah. people who may not uh or who, who people whose gender situation might be a little harder to um articulate uh the great example my partner doe uses it its pronouns uh not xenogender that's not what it it uh you know it, it's mm -hmm. ever never actually used that term for itself other people often use it but um and when asked to talk about its gender uh in a video that chariot recently did gave an unbelievably cogent and and insightful uh uh you know description of, of its gender path um that i think would would satisfy any good faith inquiry but yeah. nobody cares about that, and nobody did when Doe <laughs> yeah. when Doe was. Um, I mean, some people care about it. Good people do. But I'm. Yeah. What, what I mean, I'm talking I, about the people I, you're talking. Yeah, some of the people yeah. you're talking about don't. Um, the people who are uh, who are engaging in a lot of this don't give a shit. They will just project whatever thing is mo whatever yeah. framing is most convenient onto it, and then they'll assume what its feelings are. And I think there's a lot of assumptions yeah. that happen in this. Yeah. Anyway, I mean, not yeah. to rush or anything, but we have been going considerably over time, and uh, oh, yeah, I don't want to wait. Pe it's fine. That no, was it's a great conversation. It's okay. Yeah. yeah. And it ultimately, was, I, it falls do, on me, but I don't want to make my team yeah. mad. <laughs> no, I I do. It was a good conversation. I appreciate it. Um, I'm in the Discord. If anybody, like I said, I am very busy. But if if anybody wants to message me, maybe I don't know. Maybe we can put something in the, the the debate hall the lake of fire i don't know we'll see well, thank you so but, much for calling yeah. in it was a great conversation i really enjoyed talking with you and uh i'm glad we got to have a friendly debate uh slash yeah. discussion i quite enjoyed it a lot thank you so much for calling in likewise take have care have a great night bye bye all right That was a good con.